Okay, guys. Well, you know what? Because I'm such a whiz at doing all of this, it didn't record on YouTube. So I'm going to do this again just because I don't have any, um, I don't have anything to post for you guys. So I thought, what the heck? We'll just swing it. I'm already um, here doing this. And so, um, welcome. My name is Jane Mann. And I appreciate your support. I appreciate all your comments. I love when you um, participate. So the only reason I usually do it through Zoom is because it's easier for me to look at people doing the Anma. But um, today we are just doing this live and I'm going to go over the Anma, why I like it, why I feel that it is um, one of the most beneficial tools that you can have in your treatment room. If you don't know what it is, it's kind of a conglomeration of a bunch of stuff. And these are the fingers. These are the thumbs. This is the back, kind of the back of the um, arch of the back. And this is the back of the neck. And this is the spine. And I love to use it in many different ways. So first, I'm going to start out on why I like using it. And one of the main things that I like using it for is when I would work on clients in the treatment room, there were certain fascial restrictions that I needed them to continue to hydrate and to look into. And um, the best way to do that was to use this tool. This is um, what we always work with the most. But in this tutorial, I really want to show you how to use the thumbs and again, the back and the neck. So the first thing I like to do is I really want to warm up the tissues. And I don't feel that we do this enough because this warming up of the tissues starts to create blood flow and microcirculation. A lot of times clients think when this is being pulled down and there's a double chin or there's puffiness and swelling, that this is just a facial issue. Typically it's not. So I like to start kind of right here in the back because that's the cervical vertebrae. And I kind of come through towards the front and then I like to go right underneath the clavicle going underneath that clavicle area and going towards that armpit is a great way to start moving the stagnant lymph in this area. So you really kind of open this up and the pressure I am using, I have three pressures when I teach that I talk about with my students. And the first pressure is a very light pressure. So you can kind of just see here on my arm. It's just kind of like a, like I'm just scratching an itch type thing. And then the next one is slightly different. It's a little bit more. So now I'm literally just moving that tissue on my muscle and I call that a level two. And then level three is much, much deeper. And this is where I'm going in and I'm really working. So like level threes, I'll work the acupressure points. So how I start is, I love to just start on the neck. And we don't realize all the pathways in the lymph in this area. If you have somebody or you are that person that really has a lot of congestion, a little bit more in here, even if you feel puffiness in here or you have heavy lasal navial folds, that is trapped lymph. It's not that the, it's not that you're developing, you know, odd muscle structure. It's all about lymph. So I go in. Now your trapezius is right at that occipital all the way down here. If you're an esthetician, your traps are tight. I just wake up and know that. And so you really probably need to get outside body work um, to really stretch because just creating this mild um, microcirculation isn't going to change a lot of the muscle tightness or spasms. But we just start 
all in this area. You can even see, I just taught a class prior and um, it didn't make it to YouTube. And I don't know, I was trying to do something fancy, which I should just never do. And I didn't end up recording anything. So I thought, oh, well, I'll just do this again. So I um, still feel the benefit of it. And that's just telling you, you can just do this. And it doesn't, um, you can't overdo it. I, mean, I suppose you could overdo it if you're a moron, but sorry, I probably shouldn't say that. Um, so we're just going to open all of this up, right? While you're doing that, be mindful. Think about what, what it's creating. Like I just did that. And honestly, it just, just doing that started to, again, release a lot of the tension in the head. Then I love to go in the scalp area. And I do all of this with the fingers of the anma. And we don't think about it enough how tense the aponeurosis and all of the tendons in the scalp get. So I love to just go right into that scalp area in the back. Um, I don't know. If you guys, Victoria Deanne, I guess, has a new peptide for hair growth. So I'm super excited. I ordered some of that to try. Um, you put it in dry hair, but I imagine with the circulation, that'll be pretty amazing. And then um, Neogenesis makes a um, stem cell molecule for hair growth, which is really great. And 302 makes a vitamin C oil, um, which I really like, but I have to wash my hair and do it. And that requires uh, so much time. So I have stayed away from the oils a little bit, but I'm excited to try this new peptide and look into it. Ask your esthetician about it or ask me about it. We'll see. It's not that, you know, I have a, a real issue, obviously, with hair growth. But as you start going through menopause, you lose some of your hair and your volume. And it's just nice to have a little supplemental thing. So I love to just kind of go into the scalp. Now something I want to do is I want you to take a picture on your iPhone, if you can, of this. And you can see there are two green dots at the bottom. And then we've got some red dots all over and we're going to go over acupressure points in the face so did you snap that picture i'll do it one more time snap that picture and then pull it up on your phone and let's take a look at it together okay acupressure points are different than acupuncture points but they do stimulate different meridians in the face. And in fact, if you really start to Google it and look into it, um, they have facials like reflexology facials on the face. There is a fabulous microcurrent unit that I used to use called the Accutron. And his whole machine was based off of acupressure points. And um, we would stimulate microcurrent through those points and light. So the cool thing about acupressure points or acupuncture points are they're literally like fiber optic networks through your body. And when we stimulate it, it sends a current, a, your own body current, through to clear stagnant energy. So one of the greatest things is I like to start right underneath the clavicle. And if you just kind of feel underneath this area, you start to feel a dent. And that dent is an acupressure point. And it might even be a little tender. So you can massage it with your hands. Um, I think it's easier, especially, you know, in this area, because it's just, you can do both at the same time, you have two hands. Um, 
I start to stimulate that area. And one reason, again, that I like to work um, the clavicle down and then work up is, as I release down here, the whole face lifts. And so it's really important when you take into the consideration anatomically what is pulling a face down, how we can address it lifting naturally and kind of re, recalibrating or resetting the muscles. And acupressure points here are going to start stimulating the lymphatics. So you're just kind of going in and we're stimulating all of this area. And now we're going to take the anma, and I like to use the back of the spine, and I'm just kind of flushing this all in the area. You know, girls, like if you sleep on your, your side, how you, you start to get those wrinkles between your boobs and then low-cut shirts don't look as cute as they used to. Um, that's another great thing because you can start right in there and you can flush all the way to kind of that area. And you can kind of do the anma in between there, waking up that tissue. Um, is that gonna solve your wrinkles overnight? No, but it does create, again, microcirculation. And it is known that a woman loses 40 to 60% of her microcirculation when she enters menopause. And that's one of the reasons that you come in or you look in the mirror and you're just like, God, my face just looks so dry. It just looks so dull. Where's the life? And the first, you know, the first option many times is to Google, I want to do a peel or I want to do an enzyme. And while that is somewhat useful, it's about the same logic as taking a shingle off your roof every time a leaf got stuck in it. Because if you keep removing the shingles and not replacing it, pretty soon there's holes and water seeps in. And it's the same way with the skin. If you continually keep stripping the barrier, eventually you have a different host of issues versus dull skin. So creating microcirculation is a great way to do that. So the next extra question point we're gonna work is in the chin. So feel kind of right in this chin area. And if you don't have an anma, you can use your finger. I use the thumb and I start to just kind of circle in there. Ideally, you want to do this for about a minute because you're going to get um, a nice release in this area. It's right above the orbicularis oris. And that's a, a round muscle, just like around the eye. And so this round muscle we have helps us close and purse our lips. But under here, while we're doing all of this, it's stagnant. Do you see that doesn't move so much, does it? And it's also responsible when we repress our emotions. See how that turns up? And now look at when I do that. See the, all the muscles in the neck? So what we want to do is we want to kind of reset that. So we're just going to press right in there. And then we've got two acupressure points right here. That kind of stimulates in, in the Chinese world, it stimulates the bowels. In my world, it releases all of the repressed emotions. Each of these, the distance between here, is about the same distance. So now we're going to keep the one and we're going here and we're hitting right around the mouth. And then you can go right above the lip, kind of resetting in there. I'll tell you a little bit different. And then I just do the other side. So like I said, if you are doing a treatment on yourself, I'm not saying you have to do every single pressure point, but kind of um, 
If you have, struggle with sinuses, right underneath that cheekbone, there's one, and you always know you have that one. And underneath the eye, this is just a great one. And then you can put it there and you're hitting the other acupressure point. So this is just a really nice way to kind of um, play around with using the thumbs of the Anma. You can see I had fairly good amount of pressure, but I also have a fairly good amount of lymph for it to have that kind of red mark in there. I'm starting to really kind of wake up that skin. Um, another great one is here, right in the center of the eye. And again, while I'm doing that, I'm going to post picture. And then even from here into the scalp, you have so many. I mean, if you just start really feeling around, you can, Honestly, Google it. Just go in and really Google some of the images and acupressure points. You will find them. But the thumbs were created to create that kind of um, pressure and flow. So after I've kind of gone and I've done the acupressure point, I like to go in again and just open up all of that and I'm using about a very light, I would say in between a one or a two pressure. Just going in. Going down. And around. Now I'm going to use the back of the neck. And I'd love to just kind of fit it in there, kind of go to the side. Sometimes you or a client you may have has like a heavy glycation. And a they, you're doing microcurrent on them, or maybe they have a home microcurrent unit and they're not getting a lot of movement. Well, glycation is a condition where the sugar molecule attaches to a protein and it doesn't get through the cell membrane. So there's a hardening of the tissues and that is a cellular issue. So if you're gonna go in and start doing something like microneedling, you're gonna generate cellular turnover, but you're exasperating a pre-existing condition. So one thing that I really like to do, have my clients do is, I want them to just go in and kind of use the facial contour stretch by moving that tissue like that. So that is one way. You can also kind of hold here and anchor. Go up. And around. That's another way that you can use it. You can also, again, depending upon the face, go this way. And you can see that I have that very light at that point. I'm working on somebody and um, they're, or they have a lot of sinus issues. One of my favorite moves is to kind of take, see how that just hits so nicely. There's this little indent right here. And that's what just fits that curve right from the corner. You can hit an acupressure point. You're going down. And what I like to do is I kind of go down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up. 
And then I might go into that scalp. And that is seriously painful for me. I don't know. I wish, is anyone else doing it with me or y'all just watching? Because when I do this, it's excruciating. I must hold so much tension in my, um, my scalp. But we do. I don't know. If you guys have like a five or a four-year-old at home and you, you kind of do that to their head, their little heads are all gushy and so like supple. And then, you know, I do it in my head. And I don't know if it's years of extensions or what, but my head is like rock hard. And that is dehydrated fascia. So, you know, always kind of go in because what you're seeing here, again, is everything. And the frontalis, these lines, this is going to go all the way back to here. And um, when you can loosen this up, this all starts to relax. And what we don't think about is you've got these little fissures in um, your bones. I mean, we've got a little suture or fissure here. We've got them all in our skull and they don't harden until we get to be in our late 60s or 70s. So our faces are still changing and they're very influenced upon the restricted fascia. So this goes in and you're just creating movement and flow and microcirculation. So let's go back. I get distracted. Um, we all know, and this is why I'm not covering this, how to use the Anma like this. I really want to show you guys how to use the tool in different directions. So once we kind of open up, the pathways and we've done the neck. Next, you're going to come to the center of the face and you're going to kind of just brush to the side. And what we're doing is we're loosening up the fascia. We're releasing the toxins. Loosening up the fascia. Releasing the toxins. And now underneath the jaw, where so many people complain about jowls, this is not just a jowl issue. This a lot of times is a trap issue. So if you have a heavy jowl line and you just can't get rid of that on yourself or your clients, really work these trap areas because this trap goes from here down, your sternocleomastoid goes across here, but we have a big lymphatic kind of pathway in here, so a lot of times our scalene, sternocleomastoid, any of um, the muscles can be over tight and that fascia can be tight and restricting that. So one of the, the things that I love to do is I will kind of go in this area along the jawline and I'll always give the trap some love because that um, facelifts. A lot of times they make an incision in here. Neck lifts, huge incision in here. And again, we don't think about there can be scar tissue. And if somebody isn't healing on one side like they normally do, this is a great way. You have to you know, wait a certain amount of time to um, have that healed. But this movement is going to be great for that um, kind of microcirculation. This movement, holding, is better for fascial release. Because in fascial release, you want to hold it anywhere from 30 to 90 seconds. And that makes a great um, amount of time that the fascia starts to adapt. I don't know if any of you do yin yoga, but many times you have to hold a posture for a certain amount of time for the body to acquiesce into that new position. It's the same way. So we just start to kind of hold in here. And if you don't want to use your anma, you know, you can always use your fingers, but this is an anma class, so we're using the anma. Um, and after you do that, come back and go along the jawline. And you may feel like little kind of pebbles or, um, 
granules, those are toxins. All right, so the next um, thing I like to do, and oh my God, that feels so good. And I, like I said, I just taught a class earlier and literally I'm realizing that you can do this for a long time. Underneath the eyes. I love to use the arch of the neck. It goes right underneath my the cheekbone area. And I love to kind of go out. And then I love to attach right underneath that eye bone and do the same thing. And I'm gonna to do to the other side, kind of going through. And I'm actually going to do this side. Remember the smooth from very top and I'm hitting the acupressure point right in there. And I'm sweeping down. And this really just gets a lot of nice lymph. You could do a whole facial with just the back of the spine. And then kind of here, going to the side. You can use the back going. So I don't have any questions. Do you have any questions? Or I don't have any questions on my um, feed. But if you have anything you would like to know or like to see, now's the time. Um, I feel like you get a fairly good idea. Um, if you have the Anma, it typically is shipped in um, a container that looks like this. Sometimes um, if you order them from me, typically it comes with samples. I like the 302 and the um, moisture drops. Um, I will just put literally a drop on and then I put it all over my face and then um, I mist. And this creates a nice glide for the tool without being um, overly destructive or anything. Can I, okay, can I explain the difference? You know, gouache is, is a technique and a tool and they use many different tools. Um, this is just basically a combination of many. Um, I, you can have like a little comb gouache and you can work kind of in this area, or you can use the Anma and kind of go in that area. If you have a gouache tool and you know how to use it, then you know you probably don't need an Anma. Um, I just liked it because it gave me so many different ways to use it, and it presented its. Um, it's just kind of like a multi-use tool for the client and a multi-use tool for me in the treatment room. So um, this is kind of my version of a gouache tool. Um, let's see. Any other questions? I love to do it in the shower. Um, it's just a great way to really get in and and to do, and you can also do it on your arms. You can do it on your hands. It's great in your fingers. I have arthritis from working on faces for so long, and it's something that I do all the time. And I love to um, do it on my legs, my knees, all along the lymph line. And again, that's just more for the circulation. I don't believe this tool is not created to release fat. It's not really created to be any type of a cellulite tool. It's um, honestly just something to create just circulation and um, release of different areas. For TMJ, a lot of times I will just put right in that joint 
and that's just kind of really nice. Or I'll hit both the T, T and J and the skin releasing. It's right underneath the cyclomatic ridge. And this is a fabulous way. Um, but you're going to feel tension up in the temporalis. So this is um, a great way to release in the temples. And when you're working on, on the body, something that's really interesting to understand is uh, when one thing tightens, another thing or lengthens or shortens, something else lengthens or shortens. And over time, this habitual behavior starts to program back to the central nervous system that this is the new positioning of the muscle. And so you see this many times in um, clients, you'll be working on them and you just wonder why, well, I just, I just released them. Why is it that now they're, they're tense again? And the reason for this is because you might have released the fascia or you may have relaxed the muscle, but they have gone back to their normal lifestyle. And so the body will recompensate to hold into place or to um, protect whatever's happening. So be patient with yourself. Even if you're using the anma, sometimes that's not enough. And I don't want to, to discourage you because I think it is an amazing tool, especially for everyday microcirculation, everyday kind of freshening. Even in the car, I do it quite a bit. Um, you know, there's so much tension just in this area. And a lot of times you can feel like a thickening of that muscle. And you can kind of just kind of go up in that area or use the thumbs in those two acupressure points. So it's really just to help you and your client. In the treatment room, if you're an esthetician, it is... Um, a fabulous way to warm them up and something that I um, now have it's it's called the heart and the heart sits right in that cervical vertebrae and if you've taken my classes before this is something that's given out with that because this starts to release the occipital and the occiput it also has a trigger this here is a trigger point on the trapezius and it goes down, it's also arched, and it begins to open up that overcross syndrome. Um, I lay on the heart and I do the anma and it feels amazing. And Jessica, I also do it in the car all the time. I've got them all over the place because I have so many rejects or ones that you know weren't, weren't what we wanted to send out. So um, I'm right there with you. I appreciate you guys so much. If you have any questions, please email me. I do carry the Anma. You can find it on the store or you can get it through Christine Beyer Aesthetics. You can get it through Art of Skin. You can get it through um, a lot of the estheticians if you're a consumer on this show. I am going to be doing um, LED Live with me next Saturday. And we're going to talk a lot about the differences of LED machines, and they're not all created equal. Um, we're going to talk about bin and batch lights, why um, you have to stay in, you know, or you, you know, using the microcurrent for the allotted amount of time. Sometimes I hear estheticians say, um, oh, I just throw her under the light for five minutes. I'm going to explain why that doesn't work and why it really benefits you if you're an esthetician to get an account with a good a good company. Um, I'll help you kind of sort through those companies. I am not a paid representative of any company. I am simply sharing with you the science because that's what excites me, the science. And I think as estheticians, we get kind of bamboozled sometimes into the shiny bright objects because we don't have the knowledge of the science and why something works. So when you take my class, I usually bombard you so much with facts and science, but I really want you to understand 
why you're saying what you say. And as for a consumer, um, I want you to understand what you're looking for and why your esthetician or your skin therapist is saying this is really a good deal. Um, I'll be doing this next um, Saturday at one o'clock. I'm going to kind of just make Saturdays at one until I'm out of quarantine. <laughs> and then I may have to switch to Sundays um, because I'll probably be working a couple Saturdays to catch up on clients. I'm going to throw on my glasses super fast so I can read. Um, I think she meant different as how you hold them and use them. I'm not sure. Um, Eve, can you tell me what you mean? And I'll answer that question. Oh, Eastern or Pacific time. It's usually Pacific time. Um, and like I said, I recorded this a second. So it's maybe not as thorough as I wish it could be for you. Um, cause I, I really do love this tool. I think that it's great. I also want to, um, I have a girl coming on with me. She is a master in a technique called gyrotonic. There are very few masters in gyrotonic and gyrotonic is a rehab or a form of exercise primarily for dancers. And um, my background is I was certified in Pilates. And so I'm a very like rigid, um, linear um, instructor. Whereas Karen is a very fluid instructor and she's going to teach us how to use the Anma and sit and then we're also going to talk a little bit about even sitting in the treatment room um, in a certain amount of way and operating from the core to kind of lighten up all the tension that we get in the trap. So I'm super excited to get that on the books. And um, if there's anything that you ever want to learn about, please, you know, let me know. And I will, if I know about it, I will talk about it. If I don't, I will find somebody that does. Um, so Mary Ellen, how is the pillow used um, with the Anma? I have them lay down. If my daughter were here, we just kind of lay down like this and you're on your back. And then I will have my client in the treatment room on it, but I will also just lay on it and do it. Um, you know, the Anma is also great for date night. Like if you are home with your husband or your significant other, um, you can kind of do this treatment on them. And it is, it is like heaven when somebody does this on you. I don't know what it does, but I literally had to train one of my clients and uh, he would come in and then he, I would make him do it on me for like five minutes before my next client because it, it feels that good. Um, the red pillow does help with neck pain, but I'm not a doctor or a physical therapist, so I can't say it corrects it, but I do know that I love it. And I also take it in the car on long car rides because I'll set it kind of here when I'm in the car and it creates an amazing lumbar support. So you can get those. Um, I sell them together with an Anma for 99 or you can get the pillow itself for 55 and it's on my YouTube site or not. I don't know my square site, which there's a link. Um, you can check it out. Clients love it. Um, so if you're in the industry, you know, reach out to me and um, I can show you how to do that. Otherwise, if you take my classes, I go over how to use it. At first, it's really funny because your clients won't like it because it hurts, especially if they have like really, you know, kind of close their pectoral muscles. And again, you know, we talk about anatomically as you start to hunch forward, look what happens. Oh, look, there comes up my, my traps. Now my traps are sending a, sin a signal back to my central nervous system saying shorten, tighten. And now what are, what's happening to my pectoral muscles? Well, my pectoral muscles are coming in. Now, I want you to think about this and think about your clients. 
what is happening in here? This muscle is shortening and this is creating the jowls. So what we wanna do is we have to open and lengthen and create more flow, if that helps. Anyway, I'm rambling and um, I am so excited that I was able to answer some of your questions and get to you. I'm sorry for those that were in the other waiting room. I promise you I will have somebody here that is far more technical savvy um, than I can't even pretend to be. And I look forward to next Saturday and sharing with you with LED. And um, I look forward to um, answering any questions that you may have. I appreciate each and every one of you and the support and the love you always give. So thank you and have a great Saturday.